Hi everyone, welcome to Test Your Scoders tutorial series. In this course, you will learn about the automation testing and the framework development. I'll give you a brief introduction on these topics first. Basically, testing is comparing actual outcome with the predicted outcome. And manual testing is where you compare the actual outcome with the predicted outcome all by yourself. But in automation testing, a software will help you to compare the actual and the predicted outcome without actually performing the steps manually. This means that with the help of the coding tools and libraries, you will be able to provide certain instructions to your website. Now that we know what is automation testing, let us know what is a framework. Framework means you will be able to add a repetitive set of tasks to a certain section of your project. Now this certain section of your project could be used in most of your automation projects. Every new technology will have its pros and cons. So let us look at the pros of automation testing. Pros are reduces the time taken to test and perform the repeated task. If you have a repeated set of tasks and you have already automated that, then you will be able to direct your focus to a certain other important task. Now when you're performing a test manually, so it basically helps you to reduce the human errors while testing. You need a support of the programming language while you're also performing automation. A non-website based testing means that you can do the API testing of this particular website where considering your scenario that the website is not yet ready but the data is ready and you can validate that data. Now that we are done with the pros, we can now take a look at the cons. Since in this video series, main focus is on automation testing using Selenium. And Selenium requires the programming language knowledge. Hence, knowledge of a programming language is a must. Although open source tools like Selenium is available, Assistance for the problem solving is not directly provided by the free tools creators. There is a community, but in that community, you may find the answers are given by many other people. It's not just limited to the creators who are the experts of that particular tool which you are using and they are giving you the assistance that you need. If you are seeking such proper assistance, then a paid tool is required. Software tools and libraries are required in order to create test. Now these are the pros and cons of the automation testing. Let us quickly get an overview of the software tools and libraries. I am going to show for the framework and the automation project creation. Selenium is an open source free tool which will help us to create codes for the interaction with the website. Secondly, Cucumber is a tool where we will be able to distinguish one scenario to the other within your scripts. Maven will provide a folder structure wherein you can keep your test code scripts and resources such as the Excel sheets separate. TestNG will help you with the priority setting of your code. Rest assured is used for API testing. As I've already explained, you can validate the data easily without a UI in API testing. Lastly, we need the support of the programming language. Selenium supports programming language like Java, Python, and it even supports the languages like Ruby and Perl. This is the end of the session. Hope it was understandable to you. I will be explaining all of this in the further videos thoroughly. So stay tuned. Thank you. Hi, welcome to this video. This video is about how to install or upgrade to the new versions of Java and Eclipse in simple and easy steps. The first step is to uninstall any previous version of Java. Go to control panel, go to program and features, 
Over here, if you find any previous versions of Java, just uninstall it because we need to freshly download and install Java again. So the next step would be to download the latest Java and Eclipse versions. So let us do that. Go to Google. Type download JDK. You can see the first link for downloading the JDK is provided by oracle.com. Java is a product that is developed by Oracle, so the latest versions will be available on oracle.com. So let us click on it. Java SE 14 is the latest version, so let us click on JDK download. When we scroll down, in this page we will find the required jar file to download, which is 64 bit JDK version in a zip file. I'm going to download this in desktop and click on save. So my jar file is getting downloaded. As you can see my zip file got downloaded. So let us go to the desktop and I'm going to extract this folder. Click on extract. You can see that I've extracted my JDK folder on the desktop. Now let us download the Eclipse latest version. And over here you can find the Eclipse.org download section. Accept the cookies. Just go to download packages. This is the latest version and over here you can see Eclipse is provided for various uses but you have to download the Eclipse IDE for Java developers 64 bit. And let us click on download. I am going to save this on desktop too. Click on save. And here my Eclipse zip file is getting downloaded. So let us check what is the next step. Go to the file location where JDK was previously installed and delete that. If you have any JDK folder that is present in your system, you can delete that as well. For example, if you have any Java folder, for 32 bit you can delete that. You don't need two JDK folders in a single system. After this create a Java folder inside the program files in C drive and transfer the JDK file into this folder. Click on our extracted file. Copy the JDK folder from it. Let us go to the C drive program files. And then create a Java folder inside which you have to paste the JDK extracted folder just the way I have done already in my system. So let us go to the next step. Copy the path to the JDK and add this path to the new environment variables. So let us copy the path till JDK and let us go to environment variables. Click on the button environment variables. In system variable we need to create a new variable. So let us name it as java home. And paste the path over here. You have to not copy the path till the bin folder but till the JDK folder. And click on ok. Over here you can see that the java home variable is added. Let us add the variable to this path variable over here. Click on edit and click on new. We are going to pass the java home parameter into this along with the bin folder. Click on ok and click on ok. Now we have added our JDK path to the environment variable. Now the next step is to open the CMD and type java c and press enter. 
This will help us to verify whether Java is installed correctly or not. So let us type cmd over here and type java c command. If you are getting this output then Java is correctly installed in your system. Let us also check the version that we have installed with this command. And you can see the Java 14 version is installed in our system. Let us check the next step. It is open Eclipse. Over here our Eclipse folder is extracted from the zip file. Let us go into Eclipse and here is our Eclipse exe. Let us double click and open. Click on launch. Now that our Eclipse is opening, let us close it. And before I end this video, I would like to share a few tips. Over here, there is another step that is the ninth step which tells you that if error code 1 props up, it means that Java isn't installed. And if error code 13 props up, then the version that you have downloaded for Eclipse and Java is not same. That is 32-bit Java and Eclipse must be 32-bit as well. If you have a 64-bit Java, then you must have an 64-bit Eclipse installed. Also, let us remove the lines from these Eclipse INI and let us add the lines to the Eclipse INI because just to be safe we are doing this because Eclipse once opened does not guarantee that it will not show an error message again. So we are going to remove these lines from the Eclipse INI. Over here, just open it. And now, you will find these lines, just remove that. Now that we have removed the lines, let us add some other lines. For that, we need to just open the path to Java WEXE. Let us go to the C drive where our Java is installed in program files, Java, JDK, bin, and you will be able to find the Java exe file in this particular bin folder. So let us just copy the path to the bin. We are supposed to paste it about the Eclipse workspace dash vm then the path and then java w dot exe. Just save this Eclipse and I file close it. Go to Eclipse and open your Eclipse EXE file. This should start your Eclipse as well. Click on Launch. Now that our Eclipse is opening, let us close it. Now that our Java and Eclipse are installed correctly, I will end this video over here. Thank you. Hi, welcome to this session. In this session, we will be covering Eclipse IDE shortcuts. IDE is an acronym for Integrated Development Environment which means that it gives us a platform to develop our projects, create our projects and create our codes. Let us open our Eclipse. 
and you can see that they are asking you to provide a workspace. Now, workspace is a place in your system where you are going to create your projects. For me, my path to the workspace is in C drive. If you wish to change your workspace, click on browse. And then you can go to any of the file location where your workspace is created. For example, I have created an another workspace in D drive. You can select that particular folder. And then you can see that the workspace has been changed. If you wish to use this workspace as a default, then click on this checkbox and click on launch. Let's just expand this particular Eclipse IDE application. This is the welcome page of the Eclipse IDE. So let's just close it. And let's begin with the tutorials that are non-project based. Now this is a package explorer. Also there is a project explorer which is similar to package explorer. And over here you can import your projects and you can create a project, you can create a Java project. So all of these things could be done. You can even delete a project and set up a project. This is why a package explorer is used. You can even navigate to your scripts and the classes and everything over here. The next that I want to show you is the project explorer which is similar to this. For that we need to click on window. Go to show view and then go to other. Just type project over here and you can find the project explorer. Select it and open it. You can see that there is, it is very similar to your project in package explorer. Now let us check console. Similarly when we go to window and when we go to show view we can see the console. This is the place where you will get the output of your code. The projects that you create can be added to a repository as well. In order to connect to the git repositories, we will again go to window and go to show view and then go to other git repository. So here there are two repositories that I had created and I have connected it to the Eclipse. Now. Git is a repository meaning it is a storage area where you can keep your projects. When you connect to a git repository and you need to store your project into the git repository. Then you need to commit and push your codes into a window called git staging. So let us open it. Go to window. Go to show view. Go to other. Type git. And over here you can see the git staging. Here your unsaved changes comes up. You have to move it to these state changes. And then you have to add a commit message. And along with that you have to click on commit and push. I have explained how to connect to a git repository in Eclipse. What is it and how useful it is in another separate session. I will show you an another useful element of Eclipse that is a task list. As the name suggests, by using the task list, we can create tasks for the day to day activities. So, let us go to window, go to show view, and then open our task list. Over here, you can see that I have new category, new query, and new task creation. So let us click on category. For a task can be categorized as if you want to say some next week task, today's task. So I am creating like today's task. The category name can be the name of the module on which you are working as well. So let us click on OK. After creating a category, let us create a task inside this category. Click on this icon. You can see that Eclipse is asking us to store the task in the local repository or in the task repository. Let us click on task repository. Click on install more connectors. Now you can see that Eclipse has provided so many options for storing your task in a repository. 
you can download and install any one of these. For now, I am not going to do it. So let us click on cancel and store our task in the local repository and click on finish. Let's name our new task as task1, create a script for add to cart in flipkart.com. So I can keep this task as incomplete or complete and I can even add it to the category that we have just created. So let us choose that category today's task. And over here, I can add a schedule saying that it should be done on Monday and I'm going to choose the 6th day with the timing of 12 p.m. You can even add the hours that you are going to estimate for the task completion. So I'm giving it 3 and we must now type a description for this. So let us click on save and over here you can see that the task has now been added to today's task category. So if you want to complete this task you can even do it and we have to save this task. So yes this task has been completed it has been striked out. This is how we create a task and these were the useful elements that I wanted to share before we start with the further sections. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the session. This session is about how to install TestNG and Cucumber plugins. Before I begin, TestNG and Cucumber are the third party tools we will be integrating along with the selenium scripts in order to enhance selenium scripts with certain features. Now it provides support to your execution of code. This means that you will or you might need a plugin in order to execute your code. Some of the plugins can add certain feature to your codes like readability, it reduces your coding time and increases your codes reusability. These features are required to create really useful and cost saving projects. Now, how do we install these plugins into Eclipse IDE? You need to do it via the Eclipse Marketplace or the install new software in Eclipse. Additionally, we are going to install Maven plugin too. Lastly, I have mentioned the links to the plugins in this PPT which I will be sharing with you guys. Please find it attached in the resource section under this session. So, let us just open our Eclipse right now. Go to the location where your exe file, Eclipse exe file is located. Double click. You can see that there is already a project present in this particular Eclipse IDE. Let me just show you an example of how Cucumber plugin enhances the usage of the feature file. In this project, open this package features and you are able to see that there is a cucumber feature file present over here. In this feature file, you will be able to write all your scenarios. I have already written a scenario wherein you will be able to download Internet Explorer driver from Selenium web page. This is my scenario description. Make a note that this particular file looks just like an ordinary notepad text file with a dot feature extension. After installing the plugin, we will see what difference can be observed in this feature file. So, let us close this feature file. Let us install the Cucumber plugin and see the difference in the feature file as I was telling you earlier. Now, there are two ways to install the Cucumber plugin. One is from the Eclipse Marketplace and the another is from Install New Software. Downloading this plugin from Eclipse Marketplace would be much easier. Let us now install Cucumber plugin. Go to Help and then go to Eclipse Marketplace. 
this is the easiest way so I'm showing you this type cucumber over here the first option is cucumber eclipse plugin with the new version name so just click on install and your cucumber plugin will now be installed this installation process may take some time accept the license agreement and then click on finish click on install anyway it is asking us to restart the eclipse ide so let us restart Close this welcome page. Over here you can see that the cucumber file icon has now been changed from notepad to this cucumber icon. And also the another difference that we are going to observe is that all the keywords are getting highlighted. You can see the tags are getting highlighted, the feature is getting highlighted, scenario is getting highlighted. Even the syntax given and when all of this is getting highlighted in different colors. These are the parameters that we are going to pass to the feature file and it is even highlighted as well. The rest of the part where your code statement goes is in the plain text. This way you are able to distinguish the name of the feature, the name of the scenario and the steps that we are using in this particular feature file. The cucumber feature file and its explanation along with the syntax is further discussed in the future videos. Let us close this cucumber feature file and let us just quickly install the testng plugin. Testng plugin helps to support the execution of the testng classes and that is why we are downloading the testng plugin. Now let us install the testng plugin. Over here in Eclipse Marketplace, we cannot find TestNG plugin, so we are going to install it via the link that I've provided. So, let us copy the link from this PPT. Now, paste it in the work with and then click on Add. Click on Add. And now you can see an option for downloading the TestNG plugin is given over here. Let us expand it and check what all options are given over here in order to download. So you can see the TestNG plugin is available and the Maven integration plugin is also available. This means TestNG is providing an option for you to download the Maven plugin as well. So just click on the TestNG main option and then click on next. You will need a good connectivity in order to perform all the steps so make sure you have one. Click on finish. This is a security warning you may or may not get this but for now if you are getting it just click on install anyway. It is asking us to restart the Eclipse IDE. So let us restart. Now that our Eclipse has restarted and our test engine and Cucumber plugins are installed, let us check whether they have been installed correctly or not. Go to help and then go to install new software. Over here you can see what is already installed. Click on it. Here is our Cucumber plugin. Here is the test engine plugin and here is the Maven plugin. All the three that we were right now installing has been correctly installed. 
If you wish to uninstall anything then click on this uninstall button and your plugins will be uninstalled. So let us go ahead to the last topic of this session. The link that is shown over here is no more in use for the latest Eclipse versions. But in the popular Eclipse version, Oxygen, this link is still being used. And if you want to use that and if you want to use the Oxygen version, then you can use it and download TestNG and Cucumber plugin via this link. But I still recommend not to use the older versions anymore. Because right now the latest trends are being introduced in the Selenium and to support all those latest trends, Eclipse is being upgraded. If you still want to use them, you can. So with this, I end this session over here. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the session. Today's topic is creating a Maven folder structure. Now, as I'm telling you, it's a kind of a folder structure that is readily available for you and created by Apache. The prerequisites are JDK and Maven plugin. You need to have JDK, that is Java Development Kit, and you need to have a Maven plugin that I've already asked you to download in the previous sessions. If you have not downloaded it, go back to the previous session and download it. So what exactly is Maven? Maven is a kind of a folder structure that is a part of POM, that is project object model. Now this model and Maven will both help you to keep your project scripts and the resources like the driver and uh, your Excel sheets. These are the resources. So it will help you to keep these two things separate and inside the scripts it will help you to keep your source code and the test code separate. Now source code is the code that you use to develop a particular site. And the test code is the Selenium code that we are learning. Okay. So now I will help you to create a Maven project. Go to file. Click on new. Click on other and you could see here Maven project is selected. If you can't see that just type Maven over here and you can select the Maven project and go ahead click on next. Create a simple project and then click on next. So we have to now enter group ID and artifact ID over here. Before that, I'll explain you what group ID and artifact ID is. Actually, when you're creating your own jars or libraries, this is when the group ID and artifact ID play a very important role. Because whenever you're giving your other people to use your jars, then you're supposed to host it on your own site, under your own domain. And all these things matter because you are telling them that yes, this is created by me, this is created by my site and you can use it. So Artifact ID will help them distinguish the number of things that you have created like if you have some reporting tools, if you have some um, libraries or jars that you have created for coding, then you are going to host it under one group ID which will help you to tell that, tell the people that this is my particular site and we are the organization and we have cr created a reporting tool we have created this certain jar for you to use let us see an example in maven repository i'll just type maven repository over here this is a site where you can find dependencies for your project let's type test ng See, you can have a look here. org.testng has created testng and it has created testng remote, then testng jdk and testng jdk 15, then testng spring and reporting, so etc. etc. So, this is a site. Let us check that as well whether this site exists or not. Yes, this particular site is existing and it is hosted on org domain. 
and they are saying that I am the parent person and these are the set of libraries that you can use which is called as the artifact. So let me just give a group ID. So let's just click on finish. So you could see over here that my project is developed and I could expand it. And here is the content of my project. Now you could see SRC main Java that I was already telling you about where your source code will be maintained. The source code is the code where you will maintain your site's development code. And this is SRC test Java and test resources. This is your particular folder where your test codes will be maintained. These are simple folders and if you wish to see them in a file explorer, just right click on this resources and click on show in and then click on system explorer. So you could see that SRC test Java is opened over here and I could access any of my files that are in here. So we have a few couple of Eclipse features that as and when we'll start learning, we'll know more. Yes, now we are going to learn about the GRE library system. Basically, when you are working, I just told you the prerequisites is having a JDK installed. But you might have noticed that after installing JDK and after making this particular project, you are not actually using JDK over here, it's showing JRE. Now that is because JRE is a default Java requisite that they added. So you need to change it and make it to JDK. So we would first configure the build path. Now you should know where your Java JDK is installed. For that, we'll now go to add library. And JRE system library. Select that and click on next. Then it will show execution environment, alternate JRE and workspace default. Now if you if this particular option is not available for you that is the workspace default JRE that they have selected would be actually JRE that is here it is written JDK then you would be shown as JRE. Then we have to go to install JREs and then click on add then go to standard VM, click on next, JRE home. Now where exactly you have stored, you should know. So, I would be going where my Java JDK is installed. See, this is where my JDK Java is installed. I will select the folder. Now, I have to just select the folder. Now, this particular thing is in use. So, I have to give a valid name. JDK 14. Okay, and then finish it. So you could see that something as an option is available for me. So I'll choose that option and let's begin to work with that particular option. Okay, and click on apply and close. And you have to then select this particular execution environment. Okay. Sorry, over here, alternate GRE. We just chose alternate GRE and it has also given you directly. So now you can choose this and click on finish. Then you would see that there are two JDKs installed. So don't do that. You have to remove one. So just remove one. And you could see it is showing me correctly which JDK is installed over here and what exactly it contains. Click on apply. And let's run a simple Java project. So we could know that our things are running perfectly fine. I'll just say start class. And I'll click on public static void main that is required over here. For now because this is a Java program that I'm working on. So I'll just add a statement. 
you can actually call system.out.println with the shortcut using CSO and print hi this is Varsha and just save this now we will run this class by clicking on this particular green button and you could see this is Varsha it's running perfectly fine okay Now let us know what exactly is pom.xml. Now when I was telling you that this particular project will help us to keep our resources separately. So this pom.xml will help us to keep our jars separately and it will allow us to actually download jars and save them. And it would look something like this that we just show you a demo on how your exactly your pom will look like. Yes, it would something look like this with all the dependencies. This is a kind of an XML type of writing. So it will have all the dependencies, something to write in the Excel and something for the cucumber options. This is all what you will learn further. But right now I'm just showing you what exactly your POM will look like. So here you are mentioning that you have to download a certain kind of jar and that it's dependency as in its group ID that I was telling you with what uniquely identifies a particular jar and its artifact id the name of the jar because it is supporting cucumber along with java so it is saying that my artifact name is cucumber java and its group id that is a project that they have created for is info cukes okay it represents that particular people so io.cucumber similar way or dot selenium hq dot selenium now hq has designed this particular selenium and that is why their group id is this representing their organization and artifact id is the name of the jar that they have created for us so this is how your pom will look like and i would show you see it lists out the number of the dependencies that you have downloaded that is the number of jars you have downloaded these jars will help you to run your project and whatever you call in order to run your projects things like i'll use supposedly driver.findElement so i need selenium java jar for that yes so this jar will help me write that particular code it will provide me the library so these are aside certain kind of libraries that will help us to write our code so this is how your Maven project looks like. I hope this particular topic is understood. Thank you. Hi, welcome to this session. This session is about how to create your first Selenium script that is open your browser and close it. But before that, let us understand how Selenium communicates with the web browser. Over here, there are three components that is shown. One is the browser, the next is the driver, and the next is Selenium. That is Selenium web drivers which uses Selenese language in order to communicate. So, Selenium web driver cannot directly communicate with the browser. As you can see, there is a middle layer driver that is involved over here. Hence, we need to download a driver instance of that browser. For example, if I am using a Chrome browser, I may need to download the driver that is offered by the Chrome creators. This driver has certain controls in it that I have already mentioned over here that can be invoked by the Selenium web driver. Since the Selenium that we are using in order to communicate with the web browser needs a web driver, so that is why it is called as a selenium web driver. There is a selenium IDE which helps us to record and play back scripts. But that we are going to see in the framework types. For now we are going to concentrate only on the selenium web driver. Also there is another component of selenium which is called as selenium RC. 
and that will help you to run the same script in different browsers altogether. As you have now understood what exactly is a driver and how web browser communicates with Selenium, we'll now go and create our script. Let us expand this window and let us expand our project that we have already created earlier. And over here you can see SRC test Java and inside that we are now going to create our first script. So just right click and go to new, go to create a class and let's name this class. Now you can see that I have given an appropriate name. This means that what my class is doing is what I have described in very brief way. So even you have to do the same thing. Please provide appropriate name that is describing your website or the client because that shows how professional and how neat you are. So let us just click on this part public static void main because we are going to use that. Now over here class will help us to describe our code. So you can see that we have created a class file and this class file will contain all the Java codes that is going to be executed on the JVM that is the Java virtual machine. This virtual machine is going to help us to execute all the Java codes. The keyword public static void main is used to execute all the methods we have created in the class and the priority is decided line by line as we write the code. Now supposedly I am going to write a code for uh, say print hello and it will execute that first. The next I will write is print 1 or 2. So it will print that next. The next if I want to write say print 3 it will print that. So over here we are going to follow a sequential execution. Over here you can see that I am writing this public void method 1. Now this method or a function will help us to write our code logics. And we can call that method in this particular main method. So main method will perform the execution as I will say call method 1. It will call the method 1. And it will help us to execute that. Let us first start by writing the properties to be set for calling our Chrome driver. This lecture is going to be explained in Chrome. So those who do not use Chrome, next lecture is for you. We are going to execute on all the different browsers. So for now, you just have to watch this particular video in order to understand what is going at the backend. Now we will write and call our system class. This is how we call the class and then we are going to set its property. Over here the key values mean that you are going to enter webdriver.chrome.driver. This means that the driver that we are going to pass is called Chrome driver. Now we are going to enter where our Chrome driver is located. I am going to keep it in the resources folder. So let us just take that path first, right click on that folder, go to show in and then go to system explorer. Over here we are going into the resources which is empty for now. This is an empty folder and we are going to download our driver into this. So let us just paste the path and let us keep this path ready. Just save this by pressing Ctrl S and we are now going to the Chrome and downloading our Chrome driver and write over here download Chrome driver for Windows. After that I will get the official site for downloading this then let us click on that and over here you can see that there are certain versions of the Chrome that is available. Now let us check our Chrome version. 
over here i'll go to the settings and then go to help and then about google chrome i can find the version over here that is 83 so we have to check this version and accordingly download the 83rd version so i've already downloaded if you're using windows you need to download this particular file there you can see that i have the chrome driver zip and i have extracted that inside it i have the driver so let's just copy it press ctrl key on the keyboard and then go to your eclipse and inside this resources you need to paste that for that just click right click on this particular folder and just paste over here your chrome driver gets copied so press f2 for renaming and you can copy the entire path then cancel this and over in we will now complete our path with the name so right now we have given the name you can also press enter over here and yes we are able to see So now that we have completed our path, let's call our driver object. Call the parent class web driver, which is the driver is equals to new Chrome driver. So now our driver is initialized with the Chrome driver object. So we can now use it to do the functions that we want with our Chrome. Driver.manage.window dot maximize this will maximize your window open our url with the help of the driver we are going to use the function get in order to do it and just type your url in here and we'll now quit our driver that is we'll ask it to close before we click on execute i would like to show you how to view this console for that go to window go to show view and then here you can find your console just click on it and you will be able to view the console for executing the script on the left hand side you will be able to see run start and open run start and open browser.java this is the class we want to run and let us just run and see what happens It will display some warnings, so you need not worry about this one. Now, let us just comment this particular line and see how the URL gets opened. You can see a smaller window is opened and the URL got opened and nothing was maximized. So, this is what that particular code does. It will maximize your window for a better view so this was the old fashioned way of executing script by downloading the driver and setting the properties let's end this lecture over here and let's see in the next lecture the new way to create a web driver instance without downloading this particular driver and without setting the property thank you hi welcome to this session the previous session we have seen that how we have to download the chrome.exe files and then we have to set the path to the driver file in our code. But right now we are going to learn a better way in which we are going to directly initialize the driver object without doing all the steps that are already mentioned in the previous session. So let's start right away. I have created some task over here in Eclipse which would help us to say that which task is completed and which task is pending there are three tasks that i have listed over here one is import charts the next is initialize web driver object the third is to quit the browser let us start with the first one that is import the jars first we need to import our charts that is the libraries so that we can use the 
codes that are available in that libraries and access the features that they provide. For importing the jars, go to Google and then type over here Maven repository. Go to this link and then we need to search our jars. Now, in this particular session, we need only two jars. The first one is the Selenium Java. Click on search. And the next one is the WebDriver Manager. Over here, you can see that there are 35,000 results that are found. And you need to choose among these results what is your required jar file. In order to choose the right jar among this list, we need to check the group ID and the artifact ID. We need Selenium Java jar file from the Selenium HQ org. So let us choose this. Now at the bottom of this page, we can see that there are so many versions and usages that is given. The versions depict the version number that is the latest version and the usages say that how many people have used this particular jar file. So for the version 4, not many people have used it. So we need to carefully choose the jar file that some of the people have used it and which is the most relevant version. So just click on 3.141.59 version. And copy this dependency. In POM file, we are going to paste the dependency. Which I have already done over here. Similarly, let us also download the WebDriver Manager. For that, go to the Maven repository. And then type WebDriver Manager and search. Over here, the first is the relevant option that we want, which is the Driver Manager from GitHub.com. Over here, you can see that not many people have used WebDriver Manager. So, let us download the latest version. That is the version 4.0.0. I have copied this particular code and and I have already pasted this in pom.xml file. So now that we have completed our task 1 that is the importing jars. We need to do one more change and that is change the JRE system library over here. Just right click on it. And you will be able to go to the build path and then go to configure build path. Over here you will be able to see a default JRE system library. Just remove that. And now we are going to add the latest JDK version. So just click on add library. And over here select JRE system library. Click on next. If you are not getting this particular option along with the version. Just go to install GRE and over here you will be able to add the GRE that you want. Select the standard VM, go to next and then you need to select the GRE home. This means wherever your Java is kept. So you need to traverse to the place where your Java is present. For me, my Java file is in. C drive program files. So, I am just going to click on that folder and select this folder. So, you can see that the name is already in use. So, if you want to give a, another name, just write Java 14 and then click on finish. Over here, you can see that I am able to add the JDK. So, here I have added the new JRE that I wanted. So after this click on apply and then you will be able to see 
the workspace default JRE Java 14. So just select that and then click on finish. So over here you can see that the JDK was instantly set up by the Maven project. So there is a one last change over here that you need to make. Over here you need to make one more change. So go to window, go to preferences and then type over here Java. Then you will be able to see the editor part and inside the editor you will be able to see the content assist and inside which you will be able to find advanced. And over here you need to just click on this Java proposals and then click on apply and close. And now this particular setting will help you to get the default options available when you are coding and which is very helpful. So let us now create our class and for that first we will create a package. I have named it as web driver manager use and click on finish. Let us now create our class. Right click, go to new and then go to class. I will name this class as call driver manager. Choose the public static void main option and click on finish. So let us just call the web driver manager to help us with the setup part. Now you can see that I can add chrome driver dot setup. Now this particular code has helped us replace. This code over here has helped us replace this entire line where we need to provide our chrome driver dot exe file and we need to set that which driver we are supposed to use. So let us just comment it. With just one single line and just one import of jar you would be able to do this. So with this we don't need to download the chrome driver exe file anymore. So let us delete it. Initialize the web driver instance with the chrome driver object. In order to get this auto suggestions you have to press control space. Let us type the name as browser. And you are able to get the option chrome driver. Just hit enter. Add the semicolon. And now we are going to quit the browser. Just click on run and execute your code. That. Then over here we need to use the chromium driver for using chromium browser. Firefox driver for Firefox browser, IE driver for Internet Explorer driver and Opera driver for Opera browser. So this is all for this session. So all the tasks are completed and now we are able to use the web driver manager to do the setup work for us without downloading the Chrome driver exe or any other driver executable file for that instance. Thank you.